2 o'clock and then we're off to Wembley for that championship final. It'll be a cracker. Huddersfield against Reading. Yesterday was Blackpool's day at uh, Wembley because Blackpool won the League 2 playoff final at the famous stadium here in London. But thousands of Blackpool fans boycotted the club's big moment because they're still at odds with uh, the club's controversial owner and chairman Carl Oyston. And Carl joins us live this Monday lunchtime. Carl, good afternoon to you. Hello. Carl, thanks very much indeed for joining us because you know opposition to you still being there as chairman is still extremely evident. And uh, you probably saw that yesterday because uh, fewer than 6,000 Blackpool fans made the trip. Carl, five years ago, Blackpool took more than 30,000 followers to Wembley for the championship playoff final against West Ham. So numbers are dwindling and they still want you out and yet you still stay on. You are one thick-skinned individual, aren't you? <laughs> I'm not sure about thick-skinned quite. Um, I mean, first, firstly, I, I think I'd like to uh, say that I'm, how delighted I am for the manager and the uh, the players who, who uh, have, have performed fantastically this this season and also for the supporters at Wembley and uh, supporters who've, uh, who've stuck with the team all season. It's, uh, it, it really was. Uh, another great day at Wembley for us. But, it, I, I mean, at the end of the game, and you say that, and you're right to say it, Gary Boyer, your manager, he was asked about why are fans staying away in big numbers, and he says, well, what can be done? I can't answer it, he says. All I can affect is day-to-day -day coaching. Well, that's exactly right, isn't it? Gary came in, and uh, the, the aim was to stop the decline, and he's done, done that spectacularly well, and uh, got a team together that's... Uh, that's played very well and obviously received uh, their, their, their just dessert yesterday. So I think uh, I think that Gary's right. There's not a lot he can do other than put a good team out there and uh, get them playing attractive, winning football and, and, and try and get the supporters to support that uh, that will, that are interested yeah. in, in football rather than politics. So, so Carl, how do you answer this then? Um, the supporters love their club, back the players... And embrace promotion, but they don't want you. Well, I think there's. I mean, there's been a lot of talk and, and only talk, sadly. Um, the uh, the trust seem to have the supporters trust seem to have backed themselves into a corner somewhat. They they say that uh, we should sell the club. Well, there's no buyers, no offers, other than the imaginary ones that they sometimes talk about. So I, I don't see how the, the there's a possibility of. Of them achieving their aims, and if, so if there's, if there's people there to buy the club, if any offers come in, we'll publicise them if we're able to. But there, there just aren't any. So, but, but Carl, would you entertain a buyer? Would you entertain a buyer? Well, look, let's just deal with one thing first. If they leave the club, you can't just leave a business or a football club or, or, or anything in a vacuum by walking away. So it's just not a sensible thing to say. If there's if there are if there's a buyer, then then let's talk about there being a buyer. There isn't a buyer now. Whether we, whether we'd entertain one or discuss with them, that's we'll we'll see when that that day comes. That day hasn't come, so there's not really a lot to talk about on that on that front. But when you get so many fans turning their back on travelling to Wembley yesterday and turning their backs, Carl, on the club they love, something is badly wrong here. And there's something that's badly wrong in their eyes is you. Well, of course. There's Something badly wrong. We've suffered a period of uh, a period of bad decline, and uh, and, the, and the results of and performances that haven't been what they should should have been, and uh, and the club has has declined. So you can understand that, and you can sympathise with their position, but it doesn't alter the fact that there isn't an alternative. And if, if there is an alternative, let's talk about that. Let's talk about something positive. And if there isn't, then there's nothing to talk but about. But, Carol, there's a buyer for everything. There's a buyer out there for Blackpool. You know that. I know that. Well, if, well, if there's a buyer, then they, they, they need to come forward, stop hiding under whatever stone they're, they're hiding under, and, and make themselves known and start discussions. But th there just isn't. So if there isn't, then there's nothing to talk about. What, what would be your sale price? I mean, obviously you don't expect it to say that on, on, on air and reveal your cards, but, I mean, are you putting a prohibitive cost on selling the club? Are you a willing seller? Listen, it's irrelevant what we are unless there's someone who approaches with us to talk about buying the football club or taking over. Now, there just, there just hasn't been anyone. I mean, the, the supporters made what we, what we call a, a non-offer, 
for the club and they, they couldn't even organise a big screen for the, for the supporters that stayed away to watch the game yesterday so what hope have they got of running a football club mm. OK so let's assume that you remain uh, the, the owners of this club that, that, that you've had some uh, roller coaster times with what are you setting your sights on Carl from here? From here, well, obviously, we'll business as usual for us. We'll uh, I'll sit down with the manager this week, discuss. We, well, we must discuss uh, immediate player futures. We've got three days from the uh, from the final to uh, to exercise options that we've got on on some of the players, and uh, and we'll discuss plans for next season and recruitment and and get ourselves ready for for life back in League One. And you know, it's a it's a fantastic thing to to win a, a playoff final, and you know we've got a a good record and had some very good days out at Wembley but none of us really want to be in League 2 or winning that final we want to be higher up the league the supporters us that's definitely a common purpose but you know we are where we are and we've got to deal with where we are and try and do the best we can One of the things that rankles of course Carl is the, is the £11 million pound dividend that was drawn by the ownership from uh, from the club following the uh, departure from the Premier League will you fund a return to the Championship and perhaps set your sights on, on that top division again? Well, I think we'll, we'll do what we need to do and that we've shown that this time we've uh, we've done what we needed to do to get back out of League 2 and that's what I'll sit down and talk to the manager about this week about what we need to do now to progress in League 1 and uh, you know one step at a time and uh, it's important obviously that I speak to the manager and see what the manager's views are of of what we need and what we need to strengthen obviously we we need to strengthen and and we need to make sure that we keep this momentum and uh, keep heading in the right direction. You see, Carl, I, I think on this show we like to be also like to be the voice of uh, the supporters. Paul Alderson on Twitter. The arrogance of Carl Oyston is astonishing here. I feel sorry for the Blackpool fans. Sean on Twitter. The arrogance of Carl Oyston is just astonishing. Carl Oyston thinks he's untouchable. I mean, Carl, at the end of the day, what would you say to the Blackpool fans who went to Wembley yesterday? and spent their hard-earned money, and supported the team, and they got up, what would you say to them? What would I say? I'd say, well done. It was fantastic support. The noise they made was uh, was wonderful. The support they've given the manager all season was fantastic, and, and they carried that on yesterday, and it was uh, it was a good occasion. And what would you say to the ones who stayed away because of you? Well, I think, I think that... Uh, People have got those choices to make. They've made that choice, and they think that's the only choice that they can make. And it's, I'd agree with Gary. It's very, very sad, very unfortunate that people don't feel able to support their team, particularly at an occasion like yesterday, where it, where the, the national stadium in a in a showcase final. It's really, really sad. But Carl, is it not a question of? Is it not a situation where you you need to know when it's time to go? And that time has come and gone in the eyes of many well, of these supporters. You say that, but again, it comes back to the same thing, doesn't it? The same simple thing. If there's no one out there who's who's prepared to come forward, make an offer, take the club on, you can't just go and leave a club in a vacuum. That's just naive, isn't it, that, uh, that people would say that. But, Carl, is there any value at all, equity value, in a business that has £30 million of, of loans against it? Well, of course there's a value. So there's values in all in all football clubs. People buy buy football clubs quite regularly. So until we get to the stage where someone wants to take a football club on, there's nothing to talk about, and that's where we are. There's nothing to talk about. There's no offers other than, as I've said, the imaginary ones that the supporters trust seem to dream up from time to time. But there's there's no offers, and we will publicise it if there ever is an offer or, or an approach. But isn't if, that if, if we're able? Isn't that because you're a third division club with restricted revenues? And an enormous debt hanging over the business. No, not at all. Um, I mean, I'm not quite sure what debt you're on about. The, the, the club's got cash. It's got money owed to it from the uh, from the stadium company. It's not got debt, either external or, or bank debt. So it's probably in as good a shape as any football club that's certainly in, on the uh, in the lower leagues. That's for certain. So it's not it's not an unattractive proposition. Based on anything, really, it's uh, it's just that you know we've had no offers, and until we have had offers, as I've said, there's nothing to talk about. I see, I see a tweet here from Tangerine Knights. I don't know if you're aware of them, Carl. They say it's not about us not supporting the team; it's about us not supporting your family and how they run the club. So they love the club, Carl. And you and I have spoken about this over many years. You know, you know me. I know you. But surely it's time. It's time what to, to create a buyer. Well, you tell me how. 
I'd be delighted to uh, be delighted to consider it. Carl, so I'm not, I'm not convinced even the, if there was a couple of buyers that you'd want to sell. Well, we don't know, do we? We don't know that until someone comes along, nails the colours to the mast, makes an approach. We don't know, and we never will know. So it's, Let, it's really, it's really a, a you know. A, futile conversation Carl let's say uh, at least at least you've come on again not for the first time and you do face up to it and I admire you for that let's finish on a positive note you've got promotion you're up how are you going to entice these fans back even if you are still there well I think from the discussion we've just had I think fans will, will make their own decisions what they want to do and how they want to do that we're, we're in back in league one it's a better division I suppose for for, for local matches and uh, and bigger gates and more atmosphere. I just need to work as hard as I can to do what we can do. And what we can do is work hard with the manager and, and, and strengthen this, the team and make us competitive in this division and try and progress. That's what we do every year, believe it or not. Even in years where you decline, you still try and go through that process to make yourself stronger and uh, and achieve, and that's what we'll continue to do. Carl, I appreciate it. Thanks very much. Congratulations no, thanks, on thanks, the, the, the promotion you. again. Thank you very much. So that was Carl Lawson, the Blackpool chairman. Give us a call, 0876-1111.